Hello and welcome to this presentation. My name is Bader Dean and in this video we will learn how to cache the bitmaps stored in the SD card. In the first part we saw how to set up the SDMMC peripheral and add FATFS file system to the STM32F746.gfx template. In this second part we'll see how to cache the bitmaps stored in the SD card into the SDR. I have my SDM32 cube ID launcher asking me to select a new workspace. I will use a new workspace for this project and click launch. Here I have my STM32 cube ID project open. I'll close the information center and expand the project here. I will start by setting up the bitmap cache which consists of a pointer to a buffer and the size of the buffer. I will expand project, then application, user, and then touch GFX, and then target. The bitmap cache setup is done in touchGFX hull.cpp. Double click on the file. In the initialize method, we will set up the bitmap cache. By default, the template uses three frame buffers of 261 kilobytes each. The total size of the free frame buffer is BF400. Here we set up the start address of the cache right after the three frame buffers. The total size of the cache is 8 megabytes, which is the size of the SDR. For the user manual of the STM32F746 discovery board, we have an SDRAM of 128 megabit, but only 64 megabit is accessible. So 8 megabytes. So the size is 8 megabytes minus the size of the three frame buffers, which gives us 7.4 megabytes or 740C00. Then I will remove the default bitmap cache configuration. And last but not least, we set up the cache based on the start address and the size defined above. Here we cache up to 128 dynamic bitmaps. Next, we'll go to GUI and mainview.cpp. And here we tell touchGFX framework which bitmaps to cache. We have two cache strategies. Either we cache all the bitmaps or we cache specific bitmaps per ID. For example, I can cache the background image and the setup screen, and I can cache the image that I have in the main screen, image 00, or I can cache all the bitmaps using cache all. So I can do bitmaps cache all. And of course, in this case, I need to remove these two lines. If we need to cache all the bitmaps, of course, the size of the cache must be large enough to contain all the bitmap data. Then, of course, we need to clear the cache in the teardown method. So here, in the setup screen method, we cache all the bitmaps. And then in the teardown screen, we clear all the cache. Now I will modify the link script in a way to add a new virtual memory area SD card that starts from 0x800000 with the length of 7 megabytes. So I go to the link script here. And in the memory section, I add a new memory area that is virtual, that starts from the address A000000 and the length of 7 megabytes. 
and then here here I tell the link to play the external flash section which contains all the bitmaps into the SD card virtual memory and then I'll add the keyword no load here to tell QBID not to load the binary to that section. If we look into TouchFX Designer and then Images tab, we see that the background image and image 00 are both placed in the external flash, flash section. We'll go back here and what we did is we placed the external flash section in the SD card. I'll keep the font and the text flash section in the quad spy. When you cache a bitmap, TouchGFX copies the pixels from the original location to the bitmap cache using the block copy function in touchgfx.cpp. In our case, the bitmaps are stored in the SD card, which is not a memory map memory. Then we need to add the FATFS read operation from the SD card. If the address is within the SD card virtual memory region, then we use FATFS file to read the data. We calculate the offset within the SD card virtual memory. We place the file pointer to that offset. Then we read the number of bytes from the SD file to the destination address, which is an SDRAM address. Else, meaning if the address is not within the SD card virtual memory region, then we use the default implementation. Of course, before I can read from the SD card, I need to mount the file system and then open the file. And I want to do that only once. So I'll do FATFS. If FATFS in it is zero, then mount the file system to SD FATFS, and then open the file, SD file, and then set the variable to one to make sure I mount and open the file only once. Then I need to define these variables. So I already have uh, the FATFS files or FATFS variables defined here. I have FATFS, FATFS.c. I see the SD path is defined here. The SD FATFS file system object is defined here. The SD file is defined here. So what I need to do is to define them here as extern. And then I need to include the header file for the FATFS. And I still need to define FATFS in a variable. And the byte thread variable. And here I have SD path copied twice. I need to remove it. Now I'm ready to build the project. Select the project and click on build. We see here the build finished successfully.